off on another adventure today. Going over to the East Bank to do a little shopping and then going off to Karnak Temple. Come along! I am the wider world traveler, a plus size Australian who has lived and traveled abroad for the last 13 years. Let me bring you along on my adventures and maybe inspire you to go on some of your own. There's a big wide world out there and more than enough room in it for all of us. Heading across the Nile by motorboat. The private motorboat costs about 40 Egyptian pounds, this is about two dollars, so very reasonable. I'm here on the east bank of Luxor, on the Cornish. Behind me is the Luxor temple. A lot of the other temples and sites here in Luxor are no longer near the Nile. The Nile has moved, so they're a bit more distant. The Luxor temple is still right here along the water. So you have the Felucas and the motorboats. And over here, like big cruise ships. One of the really cool things about Luxor temple is it's right here in the modern city right by the road so you see you can hear all the horns there's a siren and there's this ancient temple that's been a place of worship for multiple faiths across millennia this is the famous Abudi bookstore and it is right across from Luxor temple it's Friday, so you can see there's a lot of people out here in the gardens of the mosque enjoying their Friday, their weekend. We are going across to Luxor Suk, Luxor Suk or Market. Let's see what they have. It's shaded under here, which is particularly nice. You can find some of stuff at most of, outside most of the temples and major sites. We've been past Luxor Temple. Egyptian pounds, which comes to about 11 US dollars with the current exchange rate. Egyptian barks that they used in the opening of the Avenue of the Sphinx. So they carried these all the way down between Karnak and Luxor temples. There is an air conditioned uh, little like, I guess museum at the entryway where they've got a diorama of Karnak as it used to be and some uh, pictures of the history of the man earthing Karnak in more modern times. Over there is the Nile, but there used to be a canal. And the Nile used to run much closer to where we are now. But this would have been water all the way up to the entrance of the temple. I am outside the first pylon of Karnak Temple the second most visited site in all of Egypt after the Giza pyramids. So this is the port of the temple and it used to be a water-filled canal. Right up to the gates of the temple. This is the great forecourt of Karnak Temple. In ancient Egypt, the forecourts of the temple and the area adjacent to the main entrance doorway of the precinct of Amun were a privileged place of contact between the god and the population who had limited access to the temple. Over here, when you look at this mud brick ramp, this is actually how they made these pylons. So this was an active construction site for 2,000 years and when it was first discovered by modern archaeologists. There actually were still blocks on this mud brick ladder that showed them, that was able to demonstrate for the archaeologists exactly how these pylons were created, how the bricks were put into place. So you see they'd make these big mud brick um, structures 
up against where they were building the pylons and build the mud brick higher and higher as they built the stone structure higher and higher. Here's a more complete view of the mud brick construction ramp that was used to put the large stones of the pylons in place. There was active construction and worship at Karnak Temple for about 2,000 years. From about 2000 BCE right up until about the start of the Common Era. And so a lot of the structures you see were built over huge expanses of time. So one thing that's here might be, might be 4,000 years old, where another is only 2,000 years old, only. When you enter the forecourt, the great forecourt, to the right hand side is the temple of Ramses III. Which seems small in comparison to how grand the whole complex is, but it's actually a pretty sizable temple. So when you look at the second pylon, you'll see these cutouts and these uh, areas where it's been shored up. So over the course of the 2000 years that construction took place here at Karnak, Sometimes one pharaoh would take down the temple or chapel or building project of a pharaoh who came before, but not wanting to be disrespectful to the gods and not wanting to anger the gods, they would sometimes use those same bricks in the new construction. So when archeologists were exploring Karnak Temple, they actually found entire temple structures inside the pylons and they've reconstructed those in the open air museum that's to the left side of the main Amun temple. So these temple structures are now some of the most intact in the whole of Kanark because they were protected for thousands of years when they were used as extra bricks in uh, the building projects of the pharaohs who came after them. So you can see that there's one grand column remaining. But if you look down, there's the bases and shorter remains of nine others. You can see it gets pretty crowded here. This is one of the obelisks that are here. There used to be several more. So the last time we visited Karnak Temple, this broken obelisk here was actually lying down on its side. And I guess just in the last couple of months, they have picked it up, <laughs> put it back upright. And this cat <laughs> found themselves a nice little spot. So this is the sacred scarab. And it is said that if you walk around the sacred scarab seven times, you can make a wish, including potentially for a husband or wife, a spouse, a partner. <laughs> this is the sacred lake of Karnak Temple. It is 5.20 p.m. The temple closes at about 5, but we're here now at 5.20 and they're just now asking us to exit. It's beautiful to be here at this time. It's a little cooler. You see the sunset. See at Kanak, you really could easily spend the whole day here. Just bring snacks and plenty of water. It's a beautiful place. Um, it does get very crowded, but you can usually find a quiet place away from it away from the crowd. The 
sun setting. The light here is a bit magical right now. The crowds are filtering out. It's really beautiful. Here we have again the wife. Oh look, she's a bit higher than the knee this time though. <laughs> but only because she's standing on top of his feet. And then way up there, there's the king. Oh, the light here right now is beautiful. I wish I could come and explore this now without the crowds, without the heat. More sphinxes lined up over there. The light right now is just beautiful. Thanks for joining me on my adventure. Subscribe, like, comment, share, and I'll see you next time, somewhere in the wider world.